In Australia's Northern Territory, we look into the Aboriginals' connection to the land. Could it hold sustainability lessons for all of us? <laughs> We sail through the Torres Strait, a narrow stretch of sea between Australia's York Peninsula and Papua New Guinea. A long time ago, this area was land. The land bridge enabled the ancestors of the Aboriginals to settle Australia more than 60,000 years ago. Their ability to survive for so long makes them one of the oldest continuous cultures in the world. They must have lived sustainably, so we wonder what other cultures can learn from them. Via video link, we put our question to Sarah Jones and Jamie Thomas of Vayapa Vurk, an organization that is committed to the well-being of the earth, mind, body and spirit. The name means Earth Connection in Jamie's family's Aboriginal language. Across Australia, every Aboriginal group had their own laws and had their own rules based on the environment that was there. The environment made the rules. We just had to learn them about what, how much we could take, their, their cycles of moving, you know, the seasons of what was growing. And if we did that, we could thrive, you know, not just survive. If you didn't understand the systems and the cycles of the land, you wouldn't understand your food sources. You wouldn't understand, you know, the seasons, the cycles, the potentials of bushfire or winds or floods. And we live sustainably because we knew we had to. The connection between the Aboriginals and the land seems to be the key to their survival and sustainable living. Indeed, we find the same lesson at Darwin Botanic Gardens and the Aboriginal Cultural Centre, which is located inside Kakadu National Park. Close to the centre we also find rock paintings, some dating back thousands of years. The Aboriginals depicted fish and other wildlife in honour of the animals providing their tribes with food. It shows how closely the first inhabitants of Australia were connected to nature. In addition, the paintings show that the Aboriginal people ate what was available locally and by definition in season. Naturally, knowledge of the environment, the cycles of plants and animals and the weather patterns were essential for this lifestyle. Sarah and Jamie point out that in many cultures that connection has been lost. You know, I, one of my elders said, Jamie, the state of the world is in the way it is, is because people are disconnected from the land that they're living on. They're disconnected from the cycles, the seasons, their responsibilities, and they're disconnected from listening to those ancient cultures that knew all this stuff. You know, you, you talk about, you know, I mean, you guys would know the power of the wind um, and what it does for us, you know, being, you know, Mother Earth's gardening tool. But most people these days don't even think about those sorts of things. You know, they're so disconnected. All they do is whinge about, you know, the weather. Um, but when they understand what it does for us, there's light bulbs go on. And the, the other narrative that's been lost in this conversation is intergenerational well-being. You know, that those ancient Indigenous stories of taking care of the land today for generations ahead. So again, it's about honouring our ancestors. So we look over our shoulder, 200,000 plus years of descendancy, all of us have on this planet. No one's been here longer than anybody else. Aboriginal Australians have lived in one spot <laughs> for one of the oldest continuing thriving cultures, but all of our ancestry has been on this planet for the same amount of time. 
You can't have a healthy mind, body, spirit if the earth isn't healthy. How do we keep the, how do we make the earth healthy, fix her up, fix it, you know, is to connect and respect. To see the Aboriginals' ongoing connection to the land in practice, we go on a tour with animal tracks and spend a day with an Aboriginal woman, Patsy. She shows us how to find freshwater mussels buried in a dry riverbed. She tears off pieces of bark from one tree to cool the skin and from another tree to use as a kind of pan to cook the meat. Guliambi, but I call him from my language Guliambi. So if you sing in, um, when um, sometimes we made it um, shelter, yeah. you can get him wet inside. It's wonderful, yeah, it's wonderful. I'm pulling off these young leaves from the middle. Fine. From the leaves of a pandanus tree, we learn to make rope, just like she and many other Aboriginal groups still do to make baskets. see burnt trees, Patsy explains that Aboriginals use fire to manage the land. By burning small pieces under the right climate conditions, they prevent uncontrolled fires. Plants and animals recover quickly after these controlled fires and kangaroos are attracted to the young grass. In turn, they are a source of food for the Aboriginals. As geese are currently bountiful, Patsy explains that it is now okay to hunt them. We pluck them, put them on green leaves in the fire and cover the lot with bark to cook the meat to perfection. Meanwhile, Patsy talks about the right way, doing things as she learned them from her ancestors with respect for nature. That can mean understanding where and when which food source is plentiful. By adapting to environmental conditions in that way, the area's biodiversity is preserved. Her yarning, telling stories by the campfire while we prepare the food, is the way to pass on stories, traditions and unwritten rules. At the root of those is a responsibility for the land, nature and the survival of families and future generations. Sarah and Jamie think that we can draw inspiration from the traditions of the Aboriginals and those of our ancestors. What are you doing today for your, for your next 10 generations? Because guess what? 10 generations ago in your ancestry, they looked after their place for you to be here. So what are you doing as a man to look after the, your place for the next 10 generations of descendancy? And light bulbs just go off like that and men start to connect to it. So the, the, the most important wealth that you can pass on to your children is about sustainability and how they look after the landscape. We all have a, a multitude of purposes as individuals, but the one purpose that we all have in common is to take care of the environment today and generations to come. The real richness is in the knowledge of knowing that you're doing the right thing for uh, uh, 10 generations to come. You know, one of my aunties said, Jamie, we, we had everything when we had nothing. And she was talking about materialism. Sarah explains that we have to start by looking inside ourselves. We are nature. You know, we, we just... We think that we're not, but we are nature. We are our environments because 
if I go out to a contaminated, you know, spot out there in the environment, I'll get contaminated, you know. So, but if I go to a spot that's, you know, healthy water, fresh, clean air, you know, beautiful food that doesn't have toxins, well, then I benefit from that. So, you know, it's understanding, when we understand that we are nature and it's about our survival as much as Mother Earth, then it's, you know, it's, it's, that's the key. And we've got it all inside of us because my ancestors were hunters and gatherers, just like your ancestors were and just like how Jamie's ancestors were only a few generations ago, just that my ancestors were a lot more, was, they were hunters and gatherers a lot longer ago um, than what Jamie's were. So my memory is, needs to be, you know, reactivated from a lot longer ago in my cellular knowledge than what Jamie's is. Um, and so all of us have that deep knowing um, inside of us. The Aboriginals understand that we depend on a healthy planet. That's why they have a saying, if you take care of country, it will take care of you. Or, as Sarah puts it, Our connection to the earth and the elements um, and knowing that we are one of Mother Earth's many, many species, but knowing that deeper connection is, and that reciprocity that goes with it of understanding that it's a two-way street, it's not just one way, um, is really that answer for well-being. And in, you know, First Nations people in Australia understood that, that they lived in harmony with their environment, um, deeply connected to it. And that's how, you know, they lived well for 100,000 plus years. Everyone can tap into their ancestors' wisdom and eat more local seasonal food, share, reuse and recycle, and minimize how much stuff they purchase. Anyone who realizes that we are part of nature and depend on a healthy planet for our own well-being takes an important step. Accepting responsibility for the Earth's well-being is the next step. Thereafter comes seeing it as our purpose to pass it on in a good condition to future generations. We all benefit from getting connected to country again. Did you like this video? And want to see more? Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us on social media. Become our patron on Patreon. Or subscribe to our email newsletter on our website.